Today's webinar is looking at measuring and addressing capability gaps in the modern workplace. My name is Andrew Barnett, a key account manager at BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. My role involves working with organizations who have a requirement to develop the capability of their IT teams. Uh, a key part of that program would typically be to understand capability and try and define capability as well and understand the gap between those two states. So we put together a presentation uh, that is born out of multiple engagements with organizations across multiple sectors um, to try and share good practice. Uh, there's a lot of content to go through, um, but we've decided to um, make it fairly content rich with a view to condensing it down and focusing on various key parts of these sorts of programs in the future. So when embarking upon a program that is designed to understand capability, define roles in an IT organization, it's useful to have some form of framework, some form of consistent language. BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT, helped to develop the SOFIA industry informed framework. And it's a framework that describes some 103 skills the IT professionals have told us or the SOFIA Foundation about. It's a 2D model, um, and you can see the, the high-level descriptions of the seven levels of SOFIA on the right-hand side. For BCS, however, when that framework uh, was developed, and every time SOFIA goes through an iteration, BCS maintains what we refer to as the plus element which is the granularity that sits behind the 102 SOFIA skills. On the right-hand side of my screen, you can see uh, an example of the SOFIA framework, which is a useful document when conducting these sorts of programs. And in the center of the screen, you can see an example of a business analysis skill at level five. You can see a paragraph that is the SOFIA paragraph. And below that, the kind of granularity that we would typically use in programs that are involved in defining and benchmarking capabilities. So we can see a series of knowledge and skills statements relating to business analysis at level five. You can also see that we have a series of work activities and qualifications as well. All this data can be pulled together readily into a development role, which people can benchmark against. Now, why are frameworks important? When we engage with organizations, they're typically being disrupted in some way, shape, or form. So it's useful to have some information, a framework uh, that's gone through uh, a process of peer review um, and some form of gateways to make the information that you're using uh, robust in, in very sometimes very challenging environments. It's good to have a common language that you might have one, one outcome of programs such as this is we have uh, we can actually achieve a reduction in role profiles. We're just getting that consistent way of creating development roles, describing capabilities, describing what people need to be doing to be successful in their in their role. Whilst we're doing these programs, it's also important to have a very clear and strong message to the individual, because these programs will involve everybody in an organisation, not just their leadership team, key managers but also individuals themselves. So it's important to reiterate the message around the SOFIA standard and why it exists and our role in their people's professional development as IT uh, practitioners. So now, as I said, the reason we put these slides together is out of some dozen years of engaging with organizations. And what we find is that the challenge is broadly the same, regardless of the sector or, or, the, or the point in time. So we've just highlighted some key reasons why organizations engage, engage with us. But if I had to distill it down, it would be to attract and maintain good people to an organization. In order to do that, you need to be able to describe to those people that you have a, a positive environment to work in. Often an organization is going through some sort of disruption. Um, as we go through these programs, it's, it's pretty evident that organizations want to attract uh, the right kind of people and retain the good staff as well. So it's important that they are seen to be engaging with the right organization and also putting a program in place that illustrates clear development pathways and clear descriptions around what people are 
um, being asked to do within the organizations. I'm touching on just a few there, but it's very much a people focused uh, program that we embark upon. Um, whilst doing so, we provide a lot of insight into an organization, leadership team as to true capability, both against defined roles in this instance, but also latent capability as well. So if you're using an industry standard, it's useful. It's a useful mechanism to draw out and engage with people to say, what else can you do above and beyond the day job? So there on the screen, you can see some uh, typical drivers, all of which you ought to be able to begin to answer when embarking upon a program such as this. So what is the capability gap? Well, if you're able to define what people need to do in a clear and concise and consistent way, you're halfway towards being able to understand um, what a capability gap is. And again, thinking about the one, you know, various standards, ways of describing roles, a gap can be focused on a number of things, professional skills, they might have some soft skills that are, that are lacking, behavior, or maybe just general technical skills. So the challenge here is to be able to sensibly and clearly define a group of skills that maybe touches on all four of those areas and be able to benchmark against them. Now, I think the, uh, the, the slide that we're looking at here is why should we address the capability gap? Um, it's probably, you've probably figured that out due to the fact you're listening to this webinar, um, but it's evident, it's really around um, maintaining the right level of capability within your organization. The bigger the gap, the less likely you are to be able to deliver uh, successful programs and projects. What's very useful is um, to establish a working group. As the programs will touch on everyone within an IT or digital uh, environment within an organization, it's important that we're engaged with some key departments and people. Obviously, the IT leaders team and managers there, a uh, key ingredient of the managers, they're going to be very busy and stretched anyway. It's important that managers are fully aware of the advantages to them um, to helping uh, to engage within, within the program. Um, and it goes without saying, without the support of the CTO or CIO, typically uh, the program uh, will start to falter perhaps, um, but a clear message as to why we're doing it, why we're engaging with the IT teams uh, needs to come from the top. The analysis and reporting is a key part of the uh, the, the program. Um, the, the effort that's gone into engaging with organizations, engaging with people, engaging with managers, defining roles, performing the benchmarking. The key objective there is to hold up a lens to the organization in terms of their true skills gaps, true capabilities. And it's designed to provide some key information to an organization so they can manage how they tackle those gaps going forward. Uh, we focus quite heavily on reporting dashboards uh, and just providing that insight to organizations so they can be more successful and more efficient uh, in plugging those learning and development gaps. The data will point to people with capability, perhaps that was previously unknown, um, or, but what you can do, what the data will lead to is, is how you can engage with people who do have capability and how they can support people who don't have capability to do the role. So this, it's useful in that regard. And as a byproduct of the process of just creating roles, even before or after benchmarking is, uh, has taken place, you start to create this interesting heat map. Um, of capability. So if you're, again, another advantage of using a framework such as Sophia Plus, as an example, or Sophia, um, is that it's a reflection of the skills that exist in the industry. When you're creating a role, you may find that there are skills that you haven't drawn from that you expected you would have done. Following the pilot, if it's deemed successful and you roll out or you engage with the entire organization, in our experience, it's very important to convey a clear message to staff as to why this program is underway and what's going to happen as a result of it. So any gaps that are identified, which will be identified, the average we find across the industry is in the region of 29-30%. Um, what are you going to do about them? So people, individuals who've engaged, spent time uh, benchmarking, um, they're going to want to know that they're going to be developed in a, in, a, in a reasonable way. So be very clear about the messaging around that. It's good practice to be very focused and, and, and use those gaps to inform development cycles for people. 
uh, but also maybe support managers in terms of how best to leverage these new gaps that have been identified. So we often find that there's a there's a focus on manager training as well. Um, incidentally, that that is a skill that exists within uh, the standard um, that can help managers understand their their the scope of their role as managers and their responsibility to uh, performance management people. It's very important now that people have spent the time to benchmark against roles. Managers have often ratified those uh, skills assessments or benchmarks. Um, people will be presented with a list of development activities, uh, far more focused um, and in tune with what they're actually required to do in their role. So it's important that as an organization, you're seen to be following up on those. Uh, and there's various ways you can do it. As I mentioned earlier, you can start to create mentoring schemes. So people with those skills, engaging with those who don't have particular skills. Um, what we also find is this, this process isn't, uh, it doesn't run on an annual cycle. People will identify a gap, they'll focus or they'll select a development activity. They'll go and address it through whatever means, training, mentoring, whatever it may be. Uh, what they find also, what we find is then that individual will then come back and quickly readdress the benchmark process uh, and thus reducing that skills gap for that in both individual, the team and the organization. So it starts to create a more um, a positive environment, which is ultimately what we're trying to do, a more positive, dynamic environment to learning and development, as opposed to something that you just have to do every year. So that, that's, that's things that we see and things that we can actually monitor as well. Now, I mentioned or I've alluded to various processes. Um, typically, an organization will try and define what good, look, good looks like, what they need to be doing. What we don't encourage is organizations when they just want to reflect on what people's capability are. Absolutely, we can capture latent capability. But first and foremost, we're interested in defining what people need to be doing for various reasons, recruitment, movement around organizations, but for that individual as well. That is informed by people, uh, team leaders, uh, department heads, who should have a view as to what the team structure needs to be. So that's represented here in this graphic by um, a building phase. Mentioned also once those roles, let's say that's the approach that you're taking, have been created, they will include key components from the framework that you're adopting. They will also and importantly include items and elements that are perhaps just specific to organizations. So you may well have a set of um, HR competencies that the entire organization are obliged to work towards. Often those are brought into people's development roles um, and then giving something back to the HR team, they can start to benchmark capability against their own set of uh, perhaps behaviors or, or skills. So the analyze phase in the center, and that's where the programs like this really come to life, when we can really identify this rich capability and hold that lens up to the organization, whilst at the same time drawing out latent capability. It's a very compelling picture for both the managers, the individuals, but also the, uh, the leadership team as well. And the final phase of these programs is typically going to be around development. Um, and it, again, as I mentioned in the previous slide, it is very important to to maintain the engagement with people and, and act on the gaps that we're seeing. Um, and a final word, um, the skills gap analysis, the process uh, and everything about the program is designed to instill a confidence in people and an organization that this is a, this is a program, a mechanism that's there to help, help to help to develop people, help organizations be successful. But it's important that the data and, and, and the roles and everything that's born out of these programs are used in day-to-day -day activities. So if a role is coming up or there's a, you're looking at succession planning, just make sure that you use the, the program and, and maybe the tooling that you're using to look at uh, and then give your teams the first opportunity to, to go for promotion as opposed to looking externally. So the information's there, just ensure that you've used it and recognize the effort it's taken that people, um, not a significant amount, but to, to actually provide you with that data. Ensure that you act on those skills gaps, um, whether it be through formal training or whether it be establishing perhaps mentoring programs. Again, positive both for the person with the capability gap, but also that person in the organization 
who uh, perhaps ought to be mentoring at this phase in their career. It's also a very efficient way of, uh, of training people. Um, use the outputs to inform your direction as an organization. You can use the whole mechanism to onboard new technologies, new ways of thinking. Um, we find that often. An organization may be adopting a new, um, a new operating system, uh, a new method, set of methodologies. It's very simple to dovetail those into this process and have people benchmark. So you keep a vigil as to how that skills gap is, is, is uh, reducing over time. So for me, that's a skills capability program in a nutshell. There's a lot of data to go through, understandably. Uh, and again, I thank you for your time and listening. Um, I think the next slide, if you have any questions about that, you can contact myself directly, Andrew Barnett. Um, I'm happy to talk to you further how, how we continue to work with all sectors in the UK, public and private, developing our tool set to accommodate new taxonomies we're seeing coming through and, uh, and working with new ways of developing people. So thank you for your time and I will speak to you again soon.